All right, awesome, we are live. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here with Dr. Rosanna Moore, and we are going to be chatting about um, contemporary music and the harp and answering the question, what kind of harpist, or sorry, what kind of music do harpists like to play? Um, I get asked that question a lot, and it's kind of tricky to answer just because we all have so many different experiences, preferences. Um, so the goal of this is just to you know, share what type of stuff we all enjoy, give you some ideas. So let me introduce Rosanna. She's a harpist and actress, and we're good to hear today about how she integrates those two things. So hi, Rosanna. Hi, how are you, my dear? Uh, doing well. Thank you so much for being here with me. This is going to be so exciting. So I'm going to kick this off and ask you how you got interested in doing like new music and working with composers. Um, I think most of it stems back to, well, if you go all the way back to when I was teeny, teeny, tiny, I loved to improvise when I was like a toddler or a three-year-old. I would go up to my parents' electric piano and bash on the bottom of the piano and say, these are the trolls. And they go up to the top of the piano and go, these are the fairies. And they were like, my poor parents are, um, they're not musicians by trade. They enjoy music, but they're not musicians. And they were like, okay, she's having fun with this. But uh, when I got a little bit older and um, uh, when I went to middle school and high school, I went to a specialist uh, music school and I just started pestering people. And it didn't matter whether they were colleagues in my year or whether they were a teacher at an orchestra course who happened to be a composer. I would go up to them and say, hi, have you written me a harp concerto yet? <laughs> I was a very precocious teenager, apparently. I love that. <laughs> Um, I just, I wanted to work with people rather than, I, I don't know, I just never really clicked with, um, for example, being given an Adam and Snart, I didn't play them, but I didn't feel like I put that much of me into some of that music. So I, I wanted right. to find stuff that was a little, a little more off the start. See, we have new music. Right? Yeah, my apologies. My kid is here with the harp, so you're going to hear some strumming in the background. So okay. enjoy and the new music. Well. <laughs> yeah. So she's open for commissions if you all want to, <laughs> to write something for her. I know we mentioned this whole new meaning to BYOB, so I still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is fun. So yeah, I love that. I actually have memories of trying to improvise on the piano too and drove my parents absolutely insane when I thought it would be fun to demonstrate a lion on the keyboard. They're oh, like, how yeah. about not? Let's do, you know, dolls or something quiet, flowers. So I was like, no, a lion, let's do a lion. I used to sit my poor parents down for hours at a time and line up all of my toys and make like this musical. Playing the piano and singing and like making little costumes for my toys. I, I enjoyed. I was clearly very creative. <laughs> my poor parents were sat there for. They've told me recently they were. These things were hours long, and they were going, "Yep, sweetie, this is great." Oh, I love that. <laughs> awesome. So, what types? I know you do a lot of different stuff. Like, what types of compositions do you enjoy the most? Um, and how do you integrate, you know, theatrical elements into that? Because that's, you know, not my area of expertise at all. Yeah. So um, to talk about my expertise in the drama thing first, when I was a teenager and I was applying to university, I was very torn between do I apply to music school or do I apply to acting school? Uh, as I mentioned, I'd been in a specialist music school for five years, so it made more sense to go into mm. music. And I basically realized that I would miss playing the harp more than I would miss acting. Ended up missing acting a lot, so I started um, looking to integrate some things into my performance. And that started with an undergrad thesis uh, and actually became my research for my doctorate, which is using different theater practitioners uh, and different techniques that they use to enhance the um, actor's performance and putting that into music, put it especially into music that doesn't have words. Because obviously, mm -hmm. singers get some of this training already. Right. Because uh, sing singing all these opera roles or even with art song, that you have words to kind of associate with what you're doing and um, the motions um, that they're singing and um, moving around. Yeah. But with music, you don't have that. It's you might have a piece that has a poem that goes with it, or you might have something that's purely called sonata. And sort of finding a way of unlocking that extra level of um, performance practice. So that's kind of the background of that. And when I 
I got to my DMA, mm. I was thinking about my lecturer title, and that was the first thing I planned before I had even got the place on the doc, uh, on the doctoral program at Eastman was I wanted to do my lecturer title on the Crown of Ariadne and look at Stanislavski and Brecht, you know, two theatre practitioners, and use different elements of um, their teachings to apply to how do you act this piece? Because obviously Crown of Ariadne comes from this large environmental theatre work, um, which is even part of a humongous uh, cycle which uh, R. Murray Schaefer has written over the course of his life. Um, and obviously the harp, the harp and the harpist is, is Ariadne in this particular play. Mm -hmm. And um, Crown is just an extract of this humongous work. So I, I wanted to really delve into uh, what that was going to mean. And as I mentioned, I like pestering people. So I started uh, chatting to composers and asking them if they'd write me pieces that had a theatrical slant. So uh, Sean William Calhoun, who is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant composer. He writes beautifully for harp. He gets the instrument so much. Uh, uh... <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Ruth. <laughs> um, um, he had written a bunch of stuff for, uh, for me before, but he wrote a piece based on the fall of the House of Usher, where I basically get to go crazy on stage and do these uh, whispering Schwachstimme stuff whilst I'm playing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And around the same time, uh, A.E. Robertson, who is a harpist and composer from Scotland, uh, wrote me a piece called Overheard on a London Bus, which my poor long-suffering roommate, who has known me for years, has... <laughs> Nicknamed it Trapped on a London Bus because I get to <laughs> basically put on this obnoxious East End London accent and pretend I was dumped on Valentine's Day. And it's lots of funny noises in the harp. And there's a, um, there's a little bit of musical borrowing because there's Maria from West Side Story thrown in there for a couple of seconds. And it's, mm -hmm. I, it just shows kind of like the breadth of the very serious dramatic stuff that I do all the way through to basically a comedy skit. Um, and that's just some uh, some of the stuff that I'm trying to do to um, grow this uh, this part of playing the harp and grow this um, section of contemporary music. So as I say, there's a bunch of stuff like yeah. this. There's, there's kind of some stuff like this for percussionists. Um, yeah, they've got all sorts because they have so many things <laughs> that they can do. There's pieces where they are playing um, plant pots with knitting needles and reading poem. And um, so I'm trying to kind of build on what you see in a lot of percussion pieces and bring that to some solo harp performances. That's awesome. That's so exciting because I don't have any experience in acting. I probably would help my performing, but it's so cool to see how those two mm. you are integrated creatively. Um, you've mentioned a couple of them, but are there any your know, favorite collaborations you've done, whether you know, it's the piece itself or it's the composer you've worked with? And what made it your favorite? Um, oh gosh, or if you're I, like me, maybe you don't have a favorite and you love I them all. I don't know if I have a favorite, but there's there's a bunch that I can mention. So one of the most recent ones is working with Kincaid Rob on um, this new Lieberharp or Klasach work uh, called Diamond Back Up Dali, yeah. which going to have a children's storybook um, go along with it and I get to do it <laughs> at the same time, um, which is just so much fun. It's just, it's silly and it works really well. I'm realizing the older I, I get that in another life I was probably a children's TV presenter. Yeah. With mildly terrifying but um uh, that piece really works for stuff like that and yeah, i saw your premiere of that that was beautiful oh, so it's fun fun it's and again this is why i'm actually moved up today because i need to finish doing a recording for that right after this but um yeah that's a really great piece and i hope that's going to start a long collaboration with Kim Page. Um, Absolutely, he's the, brilliant. Oh, he's great. One of the first pieces that i worked on though um wasn't a piece that i commissioned but a very well-known work is the final movement from Paul Patterson's Bugs Suite, Mosquito Massacre, which is great because you just get to pretend there's a mosquito flying around your face as you're trying to practice. And it sounds like terrifying. Oh, it's so much fun. I <laughs> played it for my auditions, um, uh, for my master's auditions, and I think I scared the panel of everywhere except for Eastman. Uh, <laughs> Professor Bride just sat back playing throughout the whole thing and her poor TA, I think it was Caroline Reyes was in the room. She was just looking at me going, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then I've got this 
fake can of bug spray, which was uh, is like an empty um, uh, hairspray bottle. So I'm just sort of prancing around the room with that, and these poor people are going, "What are you doing? Why did we let you inside the building?" Um, but I, I work with Paul on the on the piece. Um, so way back when when I was in National Youth Orchestra, I remember he bought one of the final copies of the part because uh, I, I I think our principal. Uh, was helping with some of the notation things because there's so many little graphics in there uh, to, to say, oh, this works, this makes sense. Could you give some clarification of what this smiley face means? Uh, that kind of thing. So uh, I got to work with Paul from being 16, 17. And then <laughs> as a senior in college, I was lucky enough to have a lesson with him on the whole suite. And uh, it's just great. He's such a nice guy to work with. So, um, and he writes so beautifully for the instrument. He's written us so much stuff already. So it's it's great to um, have that music. <laughs> yeah, oh, that sounds like a really cool piece. Hmm. Everyone, yeah, and... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Everyone should play it. It's, the first two movements aren't theatrical, but the last one you just get to go ham with it. And yeah, there's something really fun about going ham on a piece of music. <laughs> I'll have to give that a try. It might stretch me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but we all need that. Absolutely. So do you have any projects that you're working on or anything or what's coming up for you? I have a bunch of things. Um, so I, I was the, um, one of those people with the pandemic. Um, it's, I kind of need to do a bunch of things. Oh, no. so <laughs> she just wants to be on the camera. Yeah, um, she just wants to be here. She likes seeing herself on the camera. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I, I got to, the pandemic hit and I needed to do things to keep myself busy. So um, my bassoon and harp duo has been working on this project that we started last year called Women Are, which is um, a project of basically commissioning a bunch of female ident identifying composers from around the world to write us pieces based on basically what it is like to be a woman. So whether it's mm -hmm. an aspect of growing up, whether it's um, being a parent, whether it's any of these things. I, I think one of the pieces by Amy Nam um, looks at the... Yeah. <laughs> the difference between composer in French. So you have compositeur, which is just composer, or compositrice, you get to be a female composer. And it's, mm -hmm. she, um, she made a piece out of having to choose which which she wanted to be listed as in a program. Uh, so that's one thing I'm doing. Uh, I'm also working on a, uh, a commission of an electric copy for that. I forgot to tell you this before. Uh, working with DJ Spa, who's right a electric delta harp concerto mm. um which is going to be premier it was supposed to be premiered this year but pandemic uh so hopefully it's going to happen next year um we're certainly doing this in new york at queen's college with mark powell conducting which is going to be great because he is an absolute delight to work with i think we're also going to florida and Ca um california and a couple of other places if we can get some more composers and ensembles interested but awesome. um we're also um, DJ is also working with a poet who is a Dhaka poet, uh, and it's going to have some um, vague allusions to the immigration, um, uh, the immigration issues in America. And as an immigrant, that's something that's very near and dear to my heart. And I know I come to that as a person of privilege as well because I'm white and British and I have a doctorate. So, uh, but I still had to go through the whole system and it's it's not the easiest, it's not the most fun thing. So right, that's for sure. a really important thing that I'm looking forward to working on. So that's awesome. just pestering people. This is my, my favorite thing is just pestering composers mm -hmm. and the right thing. Yeah, well, then they do. Yeah, that was really interesting about the Delta Harp. So I, there's, sorry, um, not a lot of music written for it um, because the bulk of people who work with it improvise, but then a lot of us who, you know, want to explore with it, goodness, <laughs> don't have a lot of, yo, a good starting place. Okay, Ruth, I think we're going to have to probably sign off. But, um, Talking about two and a half things. We've not been talking about you enough. Please. I know. <laughs> okay, now she's happy. Oh, but yeah, uh, a lot of the Delta Harp stuff, um, just for people who want to explore it and experiment with it, there's not really any music written for it. So that's kind of an interesting way hmm. to um, 
to start, you know, make it more accessible. Yeah, uh, and DJ is not only a fantastic composer, but he's um, a guitarist and electric guitarist. And uh, I believe he won a Grammy a few years ago for his um, performance of um, guitar concerto with the London Symphony and um, uh, Joanne Folletta conducting. So he's he's a brilliant um, performer as well, and obviously knows everything about guitar pedals. So I, I think there may be some like guitar pedals and sampling and stuff being thrown into this piece, which which will be really, really good fun. That's going to be amazing. I can't I, I'm going to have to learn how to work with other pedals that aren't on a pedal yeah. so, And new technology you do not put together very often, but it'll be fine. Yeah, just takes practice. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for being here with me. It's, you know, it was so much fun to talk to you. Hopefully we gave, you know, you all who are listening some ideas and we will be back. The next person I'm interviewing um, later this month is um, Joe Redman, who's a composer and harpist. So look forward to hearing what he has to say as well. And we'll go ahead and sign off. So thank you so much, Rosanna. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful chatting with you. Yep. Awesome. Talk to everyone else later. Bye.